believe what Allah has given, it was the rahma, it was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And looking down on us. Hadid on beauty. This is from Bukhari. Allah is beautiful. And Allah loves beauty. Putting on beautiful, lawful clothes doesn't mean putting on pride. Pride means denying the truth and looking down on other people. So Allah Aswajal is beautiful. And Allah loves beauty. So there is nothing wrong in wearing beautiful clothes. You should wear beautiful clothes. Allah has given you. Wear the beautiful clothes, nice clothes. But be thankful. Don't be boastful. You wear it for yourself and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it does not mean putting on pride means when you wear clothes, when you carry yourself, and you are being boastful and you are saying, oh, you know, this dress, it costs this much. Even though it costs, when people ask, don't give them the price tag. Because if you really like uh, work on this hadith, so you have to be careful. Don't say the price tag. And you are carrying beautiful clothes because Allah loves beauty. And Allah has given you so much. Why not? And pride means denying the truth. So don't deny truth. What is the truth? Allah is one and he is Khalid Malik and Mudabbir. He has given you who we are to be pride and boastful. No, we are not denying. We believe in Allah. We believe what Allah has given. It was the Rahma. It was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And looking down on other people, no way. Don't look down on other people. Because Allah said, I will give some to more, I will give some to less. Allah says, Yaqdiru man yasha, yaqnudu man yasha. Some Allah has given more, to some Allah has given less. But if somebody has given less, are we going to look down upon them? No way. Allah loves them. So when you look other people, when they don't have much means or much things about, you know, carrying themselves nicely, don't look down on other people. Feel like, you know, Allah has given them less. You don't know what they have the quality. Allah knows about it, isn't it? So this is from Bukhari. Allah loves, Allah is beautiful, loves beauty. So putting on beautiful clothes, there is nothing wrong doing the zina. But you shouldn't do arrogance, takabbur. That is not appreciated. That is not like, who did the takabbur? Qarun, he was boastful and he's sinking in the earth. And does not mean putting on pride. Never have pride. Allah don't love mustakbirin. Allah don't like takabbur. And pride means denying the truth. Never deny the truth. We are not going to deny the truth. Allah has given to some. Allah has not given to some. And Allah give you more. Allah will give you less. That is the taqdeer. That is the qadr Allah. Don't look down on other people. Jazakallah khairin kaseera. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sir li amri wa hlul uqtatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Hadith on a man should not make another man get up from his later seat in gathering in order to sit there. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, any person, a man here means it can be anyone, man or woman. It doesn't mean uh, talking about any particular gender. A person should not make another person to get up from his later seat in gathering in order to sit there. This is in Bukhari. So let's try to understand this. It, when it happens, when you go to Friday sermon, which is called Juma Khutbah, many people 
they barge in, they rush in, and they say, oh, I'm always sitting here, so I want to sit here. And first of all, we are not supposed to talk at that time, but people, they talk because they are not knowledgeable. They don't have knowledge and they are innocent or ignorant. We can only give 70 excuses because a mu'min always think about other person, a believer, uh, good, not uh, thinking any negative. So we were saying like, you know, we shouldn't ask any other person to get up and sit there. And people, they don't even ask. Sometimes they barge in and they sit and they cross all of them and they sit when even though if they are late they sit there this is not appreciated you can see the hadith over here we shouldn't do that whether you have habit of sitting in particular corner of the masjid or even at home somebody is sitting and you are asking to get up and you are sitting there you are not supposed to do that but when we are talking about home there are certain places where you are not supposed to sit because you know uh, especially when you are staying with the extended family and some elderly person they have the habit of sitting in the particular place it's keeping their respect you are not supposed to sit there but here we are talking about particularly you are making other get up and you're sitting over there we are not supposed to do that even though you don't have any place just make the space let's see what quran says in this matter qala allah ta'ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu iza qila lakum tafassahu fil majalisi fasfahu suratul al-majadila ayah number 11 Allah the exalted says, O oh, you who believe, when you are told to make room in the assembly, spread out and make room. So Allah says, if you are asked to make space, make space for them. So like Allah will make space for you. What does it mean that Allah will make space for you? You know, many times it happens like when you are at road, you're driving, you're stuck in the traffic, you have to make up on the time and you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are making request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will make a room and uh, somehow you will reach on time. What about the other things? You know, many times like in our daily chores at home, something goes on with our children, with our family, so many things. We make space for the others and Allah will make easy for you. Allah will make space for you. So what is the thing we have to do? When somebody is coming for the salah, especially here talking about assemblies, whether it's salah or whether we are gathering for any majalis Islamically or otherwise, we have to make space because Allah will make space for you. Iza qila lakum tafassahu fil majalisi fasfahu. So this is like, oh, you who believe when you are told to make room in the assembly, spread out, make room. So we have to make room. And in other ayah, Allah says, if you make room for a Muslim, Allah will make room and Allah will make it easy for you. What does it mean make it easy for you? Many times we are stuck in so many things, but Allah will make a room for you. And it is a small thing, isn't it? Just give some space. And what does it mean give some space? You know, your heart will overcome. Oh, why should I give space? You know, that ego thingy, just remove that. Remove another thing, just remove it. Why don't I give the space? Why not? Yes, of course, I can give space. Just give space. Allah will make space for you. And what we learn, we are not supposed to ask anyone to get up and you are sitting there. Jazakallah khairan. Inshallah, we'll start our lesson for today. Nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma baad. Pauz billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. وَحْلُلْ أُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ رَبِّ زِبْنِ إِلْمَ اللَّهُمَّ فَقِّنَا فِي الدِّينَ آمِينَ سورت اللائل سورت اللائل Let's see whether this surah is Makki or Madani We'll see the detail of it and we'll do the tafsir for uh, surat اللائل Surat اللائل is surah number 92 and it has 21 ayahs, 21 verses So here this surah is a Makki surah and Makki Surah is different from the Madani. So in Makki Surah, the, there's a difference in the Makki Surah. So how the things will be in Makki Surah? 
it talks about Tawheed. What is Tawheed? Islamic monotheism. This surah so closely resembles to Surah to Shams that each surah seems to be an explanation of the other. It is one and the same thing which has been explained in Surah to Shams in one way. And in this surah, in another, this indicates that both this surah were revealed in about the same period, which is early stage of Prophet Wasallam residence in Makkah. What are the major issues, divine law and guidance? For good people, Allah will facilitate the easy way. And for the wicked, the hard way. What benefit will uh, get from his wealth if he himself is doomed? This surah identifies two different ways of life and explains the contrast between their ultimate ends and results. The first way is uh, of the one who spends his wealth, adopts taqwa, piety, acknowledges the good as the good. The second way is the one who is a miser, does not care for Allah's pleasure or displeasure and repudiates what is good and right. It is stated that these two modes of action, which are clearly opposite to each other, cannot be equal and alike in respect of their results. Just as they are different in their nature, so are they different in the results. After this, three realities are stated briefly. First, Allah has not left man uninformed in the examination hall of this world, but has taken himself the responsibility to tell him which one is straight and right way out of the different ways of life. There is no need to point out that by sending his souls and his books, he has fulfilled his responsibility. The master of both this world and the hereafter is Allah alone. If you seek this world, it is he who will give it. If you seek the hereafter, again, it is he who will give it. Now, it is for us what we strive, we strive for. Because we have given only this one life. And in third thing, the wretched one who rejects good. Presented through Rasul and the book and turns away from it. Will have a blazing fire ready for him. As for the God-fearing person who spends his wealth in a good cause without any selfish motive and only for the sake of his Rabb's pleasure, Allah's pleasure and his Rabb will be pleased with him and will bless him with so much that he will be well pleased with his Rabb. This was the summary of Surah al -Layl. So let's begin the Surah and most of the tafsir we are covering from Ibn Kasir. It has 10 volumes and it has more detail also. You can inshallah refer to it. First, we're going to see Surah al uh, translation and also we'll go a little bit uh, in depth of the word. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wallayli iza yagsha. Wannahari iza tajalla. وَمَا خَلَقَ الزَّكَرَ وَالْإِنْسَى By the night as it envelopes, by the day as it appears in the brightness, by him who created male and female. So the detail of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Layl. Layl means the night. Because of the Al, it is the. Layl, and we keep this name also, Layl, Layla, night. And as I mentioned before, this is a Makki Surah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the almost all merciful. Wal Layli Iza Yagasha. Wa is for swearing by. Layl, the night. Iza, then Yagasha. Rain Shin Ya, two covers, two envelopes. 
वन नहारी वन बाय नहार द डे इज़ा वेन तज़ल्ला इस फ्रॉम जा जीम लाम या इट अपीयर्स वमा ख़ाला का ज़करा बल उनसा वमा बाय और एंड व्हाट ख़ाला का ही क्रिएटेड ख़ाला का इस फ्रॉम कॉलम कॉ ज़करा ज़ाल कैफ़रा द मेल व एंड उनसा द फीमेल so here talks about the male and the female so when we see detail of this uh, ayas from 1 to 3 first of all the recitation of this sura suratul lail in the isham prayer the statement of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to muaz has already preceded where he said fahal asalaitu Why did you not pray the recitation of Suratul Duha and Suratul Lail? That is Surah number ninety-one and Surah number ninety-two. So he, he suggested this surah to read in the Esha time. So let's see. In this, man talks about Wal Lail and uh, Iza Yagsha. swearing by the diversity of mankind in their efforts and you know here so when allah subhanahu wa taala by the night and as it envelopes so by the diversity of the mankind in their efforts and informing of the different results of that allah swears by saying wal laili iza yaghsha by the night as it envelopes meaning when it covers the creation with its darkness and when nahari is a tajalla by the day as it appears meaning with its light and its radiance wama khalaq az-zakara wal unsa by him who created male and female this is similar to allah statement wama khalaqakum azwaja This is in Surah number seventy-eight, Ayah number eight. We have created you in pairs. It is also similar to his saying, "Wa men kulli shayin qalaqa ko zaujain." Surah number fifty-one, Ayah number forty-nine. And just as these things that are being sworn, they are opposite likewise. That which this swearing is about are opposite things. This is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "In nasayyakum la shat." Ta, and here when we see certainly your efforts and deeds diverse, different in aims and purpose. For Amma man aata wataha, as for whom who gives in charity and keeps his duty to Allah and fears Allah. Ay number six and seven. Bama sadda qabil husna, fasa nuyasi ruhu lil yusra. we will make smooth for him the path of ease and goodness wama man bakhila wastagna but he who is greedy miser and thinks himself self sufficient wakazzaba bil husna and be lies al husna and a number 10 up to 10 then we go deeper into it fasanu yassiruhu lil usra we will make smooth for him in the path for evil So here, when we see from Ayah number four, it talks about Inna Sayyakum Lashatta Inna Indeed Sayyakum Sayi. It is used for striving, and here you are striving. Lashatta Lam with Fatha is for surely. Shatta diverse or various different. Fa Amma Fa is for so. amma as for man whoever ata ata yuti is for giving so here he gave wa is the connecting it's used for and but taha this is used for taqwa adopted taqwa what is adopted taqwa means allah's consciousness wa saddaqa saddaqa this is from sid swad dal qab he confirmed or affirmed bil husna b is with al husna again al means the husna al husna best fasanu yasiruhu 
Far is so. Because of seen with Pathar, it means will soon. Okay? And noon has Dhamma, it means we. No yes, see, ruho. So, what is the mean word in this? Yes. So, here, yes is ya seen ra, means ease for him. Lil yusra, lil is for yusra, we keep this name also, means most ease. Ya seen ra, ya seen yusra, the same root word. Va and amma as for mum, whoever. Bakhila, bakhil. We use this word in Urdu also, same. The meaning is same. Miser, bakhil. Bakhila. Ba, kha, lam. Ba, again connecting. Bastagana. Bastagana, seen is used for sought. He sought. And avana is from ghani. And people keep this name Ghana, Agna is the same root word. So here Agna, Ghani means to be self-sufficient. Ghain noon ya. Ba and Kazaba it's from Kazib. Kazalba. He be light. Be with Al Husna again this word is repeated. Be best. And again, Fasanu Yassiruhu. Again, this word also repeated. Fasanu Yassiruhu. Will soon. Seen is for will soon. Fa is for so. But here it was translated then. According to the ayah, the word meaning will change. Again, noon with Dhamma is used for we shall. Fasanu Yassiruhu. Here the word is Yassir. Yasin Ra, ease for him. And the Lil Usra, Ain Seen Ra, Us is difficult. Notice that Usr and Yasr is difficult and easy. There is a difference in the meaning and also they are opposite. Yasin Ra, Yasr, that is Yusra. We use this word for ease. Asr, ain seen ra is for difficulty, most difficult. If you don't understand that also fine. If you listen again and again, inshallah, Allah will make things easy for you. So let's see the detail for it from ayah number four. In ayah number four, inna sayyakum lashatta. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna sayyakum lashatta. Indeed, your Efforts are diverse. You know, just like the night and the day are different, people are also different. So accept that variety. Don't try to make people like you. That they should like the same food or same thing. They should like be you. No. They will have different taste, different choices. In Nasayakum Lashatta, people are different. The efforts are different. Some are working for good cause and others for the bad. So, ayah number four, we see here, certainly, inna sayyakum lashatta, certainly your efforts and deeds are diverse. So, meaning the actions of the servants that they have performed are also opposite and diverse. Therefore, they are those who do good and they are those who do evil. Allah then says, man And for him who gives in charity and keep his duty to Allah and fear him. Meaning, he gives what he has been commanded to give. And he fear Allah in his affairs. So what does it mean by this? As for he who gives and fears Allah. He gives and fear Allah also. Not that he thinks I have given now, I am safe, I can commit sins. No, not that. One after another, I gave some charity sound. So now I have a license to sin. No, it's not so. No way. Because what happened with us is that our good deed, we do a little bit of good. And we get deceived by our good. Good deeds. We think that now we can commit a little bit of sin. Like you know, every year Ramadan comes, and you know, we have we feel that 
be changed and alhamdulillah most of the time alhamdulillah alhamdulillah ramadan changes us it brings a new change it brings a lot of taqwa in, in us and we should carry that throughout the life فَأَمَّا مَنْ آتَوَ التَّقَى He gives and fears. Why does he fears Allah? Because he knows what he has done is not enough. He knows that it's quite possible that I have done is rejected. Because we know how we perform good deeds. فَأَمَّا مَنْ آتَوَ التَّقَى So we have to check our intention. Are we doing for the sake of Allah? That is the key thing. Taqwa should be there. وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى and believes in Al-Husna. So here when we talk about وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى and believes in Al-Husna meaning in the compensation of that this was said by Qatada and Qusayf said in the reward then Allah says فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى we will make smooth for him the path of ease. Ibn Abba said meaning for goodness. Then Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ بَقِلَ So here, فَأَمَّا مَنْ بَقِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى فَأَمَّا مَنْ بَقِلَ He who is greedy, meaning with which that he has. وَاسْتَغْنَى and think himself self-sufficient. Ikrama reported that Ibn Abba said, this means he is stingy with his wealth and consider himself to be in no need of his Rabb, the Almighty. That this was recorded by Ibn Abi Hatim, the Kazzab al Husna and denies al Husna, meaning the recompense in the abode of the hereafter, the Kazzab al Husna. And after that, Fasanuya Siruhu lil Usra. We will make smooth for him in the path to evil. Meaning the path of evil. This Allah says in Surah number 6, Ayah number 110. And we shall turn their hearts and their eyes away as they refuse to believe therein for the first time. And we shall leave them in their tre trespass to wander blindly. And there are many ayahs with this meaning, providing that Allah reward those who intend good with success, while whoever intends evil is abandoned. And all of this is in accordance with the preordained decree. Also many hadith that proves that narration of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Imam Ahmad recorded, from Abu Bakr that he said to the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do we act according to what has already been decided or it is the matter just beginning still undecided he replied Bal amarin qad minhu. indeed this is according to what has already been decided then Abu Bakr said then what good are deeds O messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he replied Everyone will find it easy. Everyone find it easy to do such deed. That will lead him what he has created for. And the narration of Ali radiallahu al-Bukhari recorded from Ali bin Abi Talib that day the companion were with Messenger of Allah at the cemetery of Baqi. Al Gharaf, the funeral, when Prophet said, There is none among you except that his place has already been written a seat in Jannah and a seat in Halfa Jahannam. They said, O Messenger of Allah, should we depend on this? He replied, Perform deeds, for everyone will have the deeds of what he has created for Jahannam or Jannah. Made easy for him. Then he recited the ayah for Amma man ata wa taqa wa saddaqa bil husna fa sanu yasiri hu lilusra. This was mentioned as for him who gives his as taqwa and believes al husna will make smooth for him his path ease until the ayah lil usra and 
are to evil. And here, Imam Al Bukhari also recorded another similar narration from Ali bin Abi Talib, which he said, We were at funeral in the cemetery of Bakhi Al Gharam. When Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and sat down. So he, we came and sat around him and he had a stick with him. Then he bowed his head and he began to scratch the ground with his stick. Then he said, there is uh, not anyone among you or is not a single soul that has been created except that his place has been written in Jannah and in Jahannam and it has been written that he will be miserable or happy. A man said, O Messenger of Allah should we just depend on what has been written with us and give us uh, give up performing deeds for whoever of us is of people of happiness then he will be of the people of happiness then whoever among is of the people of misery, then he will be of the people of misery. Then Prophet ﷺ replied, those people who are the people of happiness, they will have the deeds of the people of happiness made easy for them. And those people who are people of misery, they will have the deeds of the people of misery made easy for them. Then he recited this ayah from Ma Man Ata Vattafa till Fasan Yasirhu Lil Osra till the Osra he recited. So here we have seen different narration regarding that. There are few more narration, and this talks about the narration of Abdullah bin Omar. Imam Ahmad recorded from Ibn Umar that Omar said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you think that deeds that we do are a matter that is already predetermined or they something just beginning or new? Prophet ﷺ said it is something that has already been predetermined. Therefore, work deeds, O son of Qatar, for verily each person will have things made easy for him. So whoever is from the people of happiness, then he will work deeds for happiness and whoever is from the people of misery then he will work deeds for the misery this hadith has been recorded by tirmidhi and this is sahih and hasan another hadith narrated by jabir radiyallahu jabir bin abdullah said o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are we performing deeds for something that has already been predetermined or is it the matter based upon what we are just doing now? Prophet said, it is a matter that has been predetermined. Then Suraha said, then what is the purpose of deeds? The Messenger of Allah said, Kullu amalin pasan, uh, li amalihi. Everyone who does deeds will have his deeds made easy. Muyassirun. For him. So, Muslim also recorded this. Ibn Jari recorded, and this was mentioned he used to free the elderly and women when they accept Islam. So, his father said to him, Oh, my son, I see that you are freeing people who are weak, but if you freed strong men, they could stand with you, defend you, and protect you. Abu Bakr as Siddiq replied, Oh, my father, I only want, I think that he said, what is with Allah? Some people of my family have told me this ayah was revealed about him. And Allah knows best. Then Allah says that will his wealth avail him when he goes down. Before moving further from ayah number 6, Wasaddaqa bil husna. So when it talks about Wasaddaqa bin Husna, ayah number 6, here, and the believers is the, they have best reward. And ayah number 7, Fasanu Yassir Hu Lil Yusra, we will ease him towards ease. What is this ease? 
easy Islam, practical Islam, because this is what will lead to ultimate ease, which is Jannah. So there are three signs of success we learn over here. Generosity, showing generosity to others, Ata, giving, but how with sincerity. Secondly, avoiding wrong with Allah's fear. Thirdly, confirming the truth and supporting it. Whoever does this, Akhirah will be made easy for him. Dunya will be made easy for him. How? Fasanu yassiruhu lil yusra. Meaning, Islam will be made easy for him. Ta'a, obedience to Allah. Will be made easy for him. How? So that he will do one good deed after another, one good deed after another. It's like, you know, chain reaction. So it's like a domino effect. One good deed leads to another, which, you know, is a blessing of Allah. That a person is able to firstly recognize a good deed and secondly do it and then continue it until reaches the end of it and he completes it this is a huge blessing of allah so prophet number seven prophet said whoever is righteous he is granted tawfiq to perform the righteousness and whoever is wicked, then he is granted to, to perform tawfiq of evil. So make dua that we should get tawfiq to pro, like do good. Hosna. But ask for he withholds and consider himself free of need and denies the best reward and we will ease him towards difficulty. Let's see from ayah number 11 to 20. In ayah number 11, وَمَا يُغْنِ أَنْهُمَا لُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّا And what will his wealth avail him when he goes down in destruction? إِنَّا عَلَيْنَ لَلْحُدَى Truly on us is to give guidance. Ayah number 13, وَإِنَّ لَنَا لَلْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى And truly on and to us belong the last hereafter and the first this one. Therefore, I have warned you of a blazing hellfire. None shall enter it save the most wretched. Who denies and turn away. Sa and al the pious will be far removed from it hell he who spent his wealth for increase in self purification and here a number 19 will end on 21 will then see the detail uh, together in the who money mean nothing to and who has in mind no favor from anyone to be paid back illa except to seek the countenance of his rab the most high wala saufa yarda he surely will be pleased when he enter jannah enter jannah means enter paradise so from ayah number 11, let's see the uh, word to word for this. In ayah number 11, Allah talks about va and this is connecting. So connecting ma is not. Ma not, yugnis, again the same word had, has been used. It's khani, why noon ya? Ya, it, yugni, it avails. Anhu for him. Just with ha, with dhamma is for him. So try to do memorize the small pronouns and how the formation changes. Ma luhu, ma luhu again. Who is for his? So this is before it was him, and here it is his. 
Accordingly, the word changes and the meaning changes. Ma luhu his wealth. Iza when taradda. The the fatha is for he. He taradda falls headlong into destruction. Inna indeed alaina is only upon us. Na is used for us. Alaina. Lal huda. Lam with fata is used for surely. And actual word is huda. Ha dal ya. This is used for hidaya. Guidance. Surely the guidance. Why this is the? Because it is al. Because of al the. Wa and inna indeed lana is only for us. La surely akhirata is from Hamza Khara the akhira hereafter wa and al ula the first means here talks about the world fa anzar tukum fa is used for so anzar tukum the main word is here noon dalra nazara so one anzar tukum tukum because of kum you all Naran a fire. Talazza lam za ya. Talazza ta is for it or she. Why this fire she use? Because grammatically some words are she. So here talazza is blazes she. La not yes la ha. He enters to burn roast in it. Illa accept. Ashka. The most wretched. This is from Shaki Sheen Kafya. Allazi who kazaba kazalba is used for lying kazaba, and this is it has tashdeed on it. So kazaba he be light. Wa and tawalla wow lam ya wali turned away. Wa and sayu jannabuha. Seen with fatha is used for will soon. Yujannabuha, he shall be put aside. Ha is for it. Attaqa, the most righteous. Have the taqwa. Allazihu, yuti, he gives malahu, his wealth. Again, who is used for his. And actual word is mal. Yatazakka, he purifies. And what is the root word here? Tazkiya, zakiya, zaka, zal kafia. For purification. We use for zakat also same word. Ba and ma not the ahadin for anyone in the who with near who again for him. Min from ni'matin, any favor word. Nema. We use this in Urdu also. Nema. Noon ayin me. Tujza. It she is given as a reward. Recompense. Illa except ibtiga. Ibtiga is from Baghi. To seek. Wajhi. Waj is used for face. Wajhi. Face. Countenance. Rabbihi. Of his Rabb. Al-Ala. The most high. This is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ba and la saufa. La here is used for surely. Saufa will shortly. Yarda, he will pleased. Is from Rada. Ra, dot, ya. Radi Allahu anhu. Rada, rida, the same root word. So let's go a deeper uh, the meaning of this from ayah number 11. Ayah number 11 talks about Vama yoni anhuma lahu is a taradda. So here, and what will his wealth avail him when he falls? So when he falls, what his uh, wealth will avail him? And what will his wealth avail him when he goes down? Mujahid said this means when he dies. Abu Saleh and Malik said, narrating from Zaid bin Aslam, then he goes down into the hellfire. And ayah number 12 onwards, Allah talks about, you know, the matter of guidance and other than that is in the hand of Allah and Allah's warning about the hellfire. Qatada said, 
Inna alayna lal huda. Ayah number 12 here. Inna alayna lal huda. Truly on us to give guidance. This means we will explain what is lawful and what is prohibited. Others have said that it means whoever travels upon the path of guidance, hidayah, then he will reach Allah in the hereafter. We consider this ayah like Allah, uh, other ayah, wa uh, and upon Allah is the responsibility to explain the straight path. Surah number 16, ayah number 9. This has been mentioned by Ibn Jarir. Allah said, Wa inna lalan akhirat wal ula, wa inna lana lal akhirata wal ula. And number 13, and truly unto us belong the last hereafter and the first this world. This means they both belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah in the complete control of everything. Then Allah says, For answer to come, then here in Alayna Lal Huda, wa inna Lan and Akhirat Wal Ula, for answer to come, Naran Talaza. Therefore, I have warned you of a blazing hellfire in our number 14. Here, Mujahid said blazing, and other Mufassir said, giving a sermon in which he said, I heard Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam giving in sermon in which he said, Anzar to Kumnara, I have warned you of the fire. And he said, it is in such a voice that if a man was in the marketplace, he could hear it from where I am standing now. And he said, it is with such force that the garment that was on his shoulder fell down to his feet. Imam Ahmad recorded from Abu Ishaq that he heard Numan bin Bashir giving a sermon in which he said, I heard Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Verily the person to be punished lightest of the people of the fire on the day of judgment will be a man who will have placed on the soles of his feet two coals that will cause his brain to Boy, do you understand? The least of the punishment is two coals are placed on the foot and their uh, like uh, brain will be boiling because of the heat. Imam Bukhari recorded. Muslim recorded that it was said, really the lightest punishment received by the people of hellfire will be a man who will have two sandals whose straps will be made of fire that will cause his brain to boil just as a quadrant boils. Yet he will not think that anyone is receiving a torment more severe than him even though he will be receiving the lightest punishment of them. And then Allah says, so this was the mention of how the lightest of the punishment. Panzer tukum nanan talaza. La yes laha illa ashqa. None shall enter it save the most wretched. None shall enter it the save the most wretched meaning none will enter surrounded by it on all sides except the most wretched. Then Allah explained who has the most wretched it by his saying. Allazi kazzaba. You see here, Allazi kazzaba wa tawalla, who denies and turn away. Ayah number 16. And here, meaning from acting with his limbs and performing deeds according to their pillars. Imam Ahmad recorded from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that Prophet said, all of my followers will enter Jannah on the day of judgment except for whoever refuses. The companion said, who would refuse? Oh, Allah's Messenger Wasallam. He replied, whoever obeys me, he will enter Jannah. And whoever disobeys me, then he, he has refused. Al-Bukhari also recorded this hadith. You understand? Like, you know, those who 
accept Prophet as a prophet, those who reject and those who don't act upon it. That's what it's mentioned here. And the muttaqin, the righteous, will be far removed from hellfire. So here, and those with taqwa will be far removed from it. Meaning the righteous, pure, most pious person will be saved from the fire. And then he explains who he is by saying, Allazi yuti ma lahum yatazakka. So, Al Husna, the best, either La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah or reward from Allah. Allah will compensate for what He will spend in the Allah's way. And uh, Narrated by Ali radiallahu anhu, we were in the company of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "There is none among you that has place written for him in paradise and hellfire." We said, "O Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, shall we depend on the fact and give up work?" He replied, "No. Carry on doing good deed, for everybody will find easy to do such good deed, and will lead him to his destined place." Then Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited. As for him who gives in charity and keep his duty to Allah, fears him and believes in Al-Husna. We will make smooth for him the path of ease. This is in Sahih Al-Bukhari. So, ayah number 19, 20 and 21. 19. And who has in mind no favor from anyone to be paid back. So, here, Bama li ahadin. First, Allazi yuti malu yatazakka, he who gives of his wealth for self purification. And meaning, he spent his wealth in obedience to his Rabb in order to purify himself and his wealth and whatever Allah has bestowed upon him of his religion, worldly things. And Vama li ahadin in the homin niyamadin putza and he. Who has in mind a favor from anyone to be paid back, meaning giving his wealth is not done so that he may gain some favor from someone where they return some good to him and therefore he gives to get something in return. He only spent his wealth to seek the face of the Lord, the Most High. Except to seek the countenance of his rub. I number 21, meaning he this in I number um, 20, meaning hoping to attend the blessing of seeing him in final abode in the garden of paradise. Who the people who is doing good for the sake of Allah. that he surely will be pleased, meaning indeed those with this characteristic will be pleased. The cause of this revelation and the virtue of Abu Bakr, many of the scholars of Tafsir have, have, have mentioned that these ayahs were revealed about Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Some of them even mentioned that there is a consensus about the Quranic commentary concerning this. This is there is no doubt that he is included in the meaning of this ayah and that. He is the most deserving of the Ummah to be described with this characteristic in general for indeed. The wording of this ayah is general in Allah says what mentioned before from ayah number 19 and so on till the end. Give us his wealth and self purification who has in mind no favor from anyone to pay it back. However, Abu Bakr Siddiq was the first and foremost of this Ummah to have all of these characteristics and other praiseworthy characteristics as well. For verily he was truthful, righteous, generous, charitable and he always spent his wealth in obedience of his master Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in aiding the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how many dirham and dinar did he spend seeking the continence of the most noble Lord, continence of Allah and did not consider any of the people as owning him some favor that he needed to get compensation for. Rather, 
His virtue and kindness was even shown towards the leaders and the chiefs from all other tribes. This is why Urwa bin Masood, who was the chief of the Thaqif tribe, said to him on the day of Treaty of Hudaybiyah, By Allah, if I did not owe you a debt which I have not paid you back for, I would have responded to you your call to Islam. Abu Bakr as Siddiq became angry with him for saying such a thing. I owe you something? So if this is, was the position with the chief of the Arabs and the heads of these tribes, then what about those other than them? Thus Allah says, And who is in mind no favor from anyone be paid back except to seek the continence of Allah. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, whatever he did, it's for the continence of Allah. And this in two sahih, it is recorded that Messenger of Allah who ever equipped two riding animals in the way of Allah, the gatekeeper of Jannah, paradise will call to him saying, O servant of Allah, this is good. So Abu Bakr Siddiq said, O Messenger of Allah the one who is called from them, will not have any need. Will there be anyone who will be called from all of them? Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And I hope that you will be one of them. Subhanallah. So that was the thing mentioned about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. So, Allazi yuti malahum yatazakka. When we see the ayah number 18, to purify the world. This is so important, you know. Allazi yuti malahum yatazakka. The, who will be saved from the hellfire? The one who gives his wealth to purify himself. You know, purify himself means that shouldn't be there. You need to get rid of them regardless of how someone has treated you. But you have those feelings, so, so you have problem. But you, still, you're going to give for the sake of Allah. That's how it will be. So the things you love, give them, give in the way of Allah, to purify, clean your heart and do it for the sake of Allah. And I remember 19, 20 and 21, this is so important. Uh, so Allah says, and not giving for anyone who has done him a favor to be rewarded, but only seeking the continence of his Rabb, and the Lord is going to be satisfied. So be happy with us. We are uh, like begging Allah subhanahu wa Allah, you be happy with me. You be pleased with me. This was the Surah Al-Layl. Just as we'll see a quick review for this. This is a Makki Surah and it is a smaller Surah. It has 21 verses. Wallayli is a yaksha by the night as it envelopes. Wal Nahari is the jalla. And the day as it appears in the brightness by him who created and male and female. So here it talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created male and female. So clearly when people talks about any other creature other than male and female. So you don't see anything in the Quran or Hadith about those people like people talk about. Here it talks about male and female. Certainly your efforts are and deeds are diverse means different in aims and purpose and as for him who gives in charity keeps his duty to Allah and fears him and from ayah number 6 to 10 and believes in al-husna husna we will make smooth for him the path of ease have you ever seen when you try to do good Allah will give you perfect to do more good 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 but he who is greedy, he is greedy and thinks about himself, self sufficient What will happen? The Tazab of Al Husna and be lies. So, what will happen? Allah will make smooth for him the evil path. You know, have you ever seen the people if you are doing one evil, they follow with the another, 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 another. So, Allah has made because of their evil thoughts, because they are not on the Hidayah. Evil has become easy for them. And what will his wealth avail him? What he goes down when he goes down in destruction? Truly on us is to give the guidance. 
guidance is only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahdina sirat al-mustaqim. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Wa inna lana al-akhiratu wal-ula. And truly, and to us belong the last, means hereafter, and the first, this world. So, fa'anzar tukum narin talazza. Therefore, I have warned you of a blazing fire. So, prophets and rasul, they warned of the blazing fire. None shall enter it, save the most wretched. La yaslaha illa al-ashqa. Who will enter the blazing fire? Ashqa, the most wretched person. And what else? They have the qualities. Kazaba. They denied. And also they turn away. Allazi kazaba wa tawalla. And but here the topic changes. Fasa yujanna buhal atqa. And the muttaqin. How they will be. Allazi yuti maalahu yatazaka. He who spend his wealth for increase in self purification. Not only that. And also wa maali ahadin in the home in niyamati tujza. And who has in mind no favor from anyone to be paid back. You know, whatever we are doing good with the people, never expect anything from them. Not even Jazakallah. Never ever ask them, you know, they should, um, you know, some people, if you do favor, you say, okay, at least make dua for me. Don't say that also. Because as if you are taking uh, some favor in, in that case. So do it for the sake of Allah. You know, in uh, saying of Urdu, it says Whatever the good you do, throw it in the well. That's how it will be. Throw in the well. Like whatever the good you are doing it. And Allah will reward you for that. Just now we have seen the hadith. And in, in that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And in the end, we have seen the hadith where it says uh, Abu Bakr siddiq will enter from all the gates. Why? Because he has so much good characteristics. And this is talking about him. And I number 20 and 21, except to seek the countenance of Allah and surely will be pleased. So we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will be pleased with us. So that is the main motive, not to show off, not for the uh, people to be happy. Of course, they should be happy, but the main thing, we want to make our Rabb happy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy, so that Allah make our entry easy in Jannah. So this was Surah Al-Layl and uh, here we end Surah Al-Layl. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka nastaghfiruka natubli. Let's start the hadith session for today. Today's hadith session is regarding rifq. Rifq means gentleness. So there are few hadith and few ayahs of the Quran. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Surah Al-Shura, ayah number 215. وَخْفِدْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah the Exalted says, Be kind and humble to the believers who follow you. So, be kind to the believers who follow you. And the next ayah is from Surah Al-Maidah. And this talks about ayah number 54. أَزِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Izzatin alal kafirin. Allah the exalted say, humble towards the believers, stern towards the disbelievers. So we should be humble towards the believers and stern towards the disbelievers. And this uh, talks about Prophet quality. So let's begin the hadith. An Aisha annaha qalat qala Rasulullah iza arad Allah. Azbajalla bi ahli baitin khayran adkhala alayhum rifq rawahu ahmad. Aisha radiyallaha, who is she? The wife of Prophet said, When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted intense goodness with the family, he places gentleness upon them. What he places? Baita khayran adkhala alayhum rifq. So he places gentleness in the family. So gentleness is a blessing for the family. Have you ever seen how Prophet ﷺ was gentle towards the family? And following his footsteps, many people, they are very gentle. And this is a blessing from Allah ﷻ. And people think, oh, they are foolish. No, they are not foolish. They are gentle. It's a blessing from Allah ﷻ. And here on uh, next hadith, it talks about an uh, darda an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
talks about قال من آتي حزه من رفق فقد أوتي حزه من الخير ومن حرم حزه من رفق فقد حرم حزه من الخير Abu Darda, who he was, he was a companion. And who is companion? Who saw Prophet ﷺ and they have Iman. Abu Darda anhu narrated Prophet ﷺ said, whoever has been given a share of gentleness. So indeed he has been given a share of good. And whoever is deprived of a share of gentleness. So indeed he has been deprived of a share of good. So giving the share of goodness is a blessing. Deprive the share of gentleness is also depriving the share of good. So we want goodness. If you are not given this goodness, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try. And inshallah Allah will give you tawfiq inshallah. So next hadith in this we see this was narrated by Jari radiallahu anhu. Narrated, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, He who is deprived of gentleness is deprived of goodness. Man yuhrami rifka yuhrami khair. So one who is for, uh, deprived of gentleness is deprived of goodness. It means that if you don't have gentleness, so it's like deprived of the all goodness. And we want khair because khair, goodness will lead to jannah. So we should do goodness and many times, you know, non-Muslim, they try to do good, but they will get good only in this world because without La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and acting about Amal and Amal is Saleh, then only they can enter Jannah. But being a Momin or Momina, why don't we do Rifq? Why don't we do gentleness? And it will, be, it will bring a Khair. Let's see next hadith. Here talks about again Aisha radiallahu the wife of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "O oh Aisha, indeed, here, O oh Aisha, indeed, Allah is gentle, and He loves gentleness, and He gives due to gentleness, and He does not give due to harshness, and He does not give upon anything else beside it." So whatever the gentleness is given is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone is not gentle, they are deprived from it. We have seen the previous hadith, same thing. This also mentioned in a different manner. Sometimes hadith will be same with the two or three words will be different in that. Aisha radiya lanha narrated, Jew came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, Assam, Assamu alayka, means death upon you. He, Rasulullah sallallahu replied, the same on you. Aisha radiallahu anha said to them, Death be upon you, may Allah curse you and shower his wrath upon you. Allah's Messenger sallallahu said, Be calm, O Aisha, be gentle and beware of being harsh, of saying evil things. She said, Did you not hear what they said? He sallallahu said, Did you not hear what I said? I have returned this statement to them. And my invocation against them will be accepted but their against me will not be accepted you understand there was uh, people of jew they came and they said assalamu alaikum means death upon prophet so prophet replied the same way so aisha radiallahu when she heard this she said, death be upon you, may Allah curse you, shower his wrath upon this. On hearing this, Prophet ﷺ said, be calm, Aisha, be gentle. What he said? To be calm, to be gentle, beware of being harsh. Rasulullah ﷺ said not to say any evil things, harsh things. She said, did you not hear? So Aisha radiallahu said, oh, did you not hear what they said? So Sallallahu said, did you not hear what I said? I have returned their statement to them and my invocation against them will be accepted. You understand? Because he's a prophet, but there will not be accepted. Okay. So what we learn from this hadith, whatever the people do, the curse or lana, we shouldn't do that. Because Prophet Islam has taught us that not to do. Whatever they said, they, they, they curse the same thing he replied. 
the equally you can reply if you don't that is more good but equally he replied because he want to show the umma how the response should be and the next hadith again this was uh, narrated by aisha radhiyallahu anha the wife of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whenever gentleness is added to something it adorns it whenever it withdraws from something it leaves it defective qala inna rifqa la yakunu fi shay'in illa zanuhu wa la yunza'u min ash-shay'in illa sha'nahu you know zina adornment this is gentleness will add adornment to it whenever it is something it leaves it is defective have you ever seen some person he is very good looking he is very nice he or she but their behavior is so gentle and calm and nice that will add to the adornment prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very nice looking but he was very gentle and kind his gentleness was on the top most position his gentleness everyone one loves his characteristic so gentleness will add adornment and leaving it is defective if somebody is harsh and these days people they portray and say oh so and so is harsh so what that is defective so that is not right so we should ask allah and we should try to be have ref and what is the purpose of learning this chapter we want gentleness we should make dua for ourselves first and then we should convey this message to others if we don't have also try to ask allah subhanahu wa taala repeatedly tell yourself no allah i want to have ref i want to have gentleness in my characteristic because that will bring closer to jannah next hadith abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu anhu narrated allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shall i not inform you of who is forbidden from hell fire or whom the fire is forbidden upon a man who is always accessible gentle and easy going you understand who is uh, going to jannah gentle and easy going so what we learn from this person is forbidden from hell fire but what are the two characteristic they have the man who is always accessible and gentle and easy going always accessible means it can happen in our family in friends or so on so forth like you know because of their harshness and rudeness we are not able to access them sometimes even the own parents they become so harsh and rude saying that these are the rules of the home okay that's fine if you uh, put uh, certain rules at home it is the organized way but it doesn't mean that so much harsh and rude that uh, children are not able to share their own thoughts and even sometimes uh, grandparents or sometimes even our you know uh, friend circle or our own teachers so this doesn't mean like you know if you have given a certain position doesn't mean that you are not accessible accessible in sense be kind and gentle to them and easy going you know you have been given certain position whether at home or at work but it doesn't mean that you should be boastful and you are not accessible you understand that this is what we learned today so today chapter was about gentleness gentleness is from rifq and rifq is used for the elbow of your hand an elbow and also the same rafa qaf rifq is also used for rafiq close friend and rifq is close friend how close friend you know how the hand is dependent on elbow you rely on it the same way rafiq you re- rely on your close friend isn't it so gentleness will lead you to jannah so calmness and gentleness kindness humbleness that is loved by allah subhanahu wa taala and we want to please allah subhanahu wa taala isn't it those who have gentleness allah has placed that gentleness and allah subhanahu wa taala says this is the 
portion of gentleness Allah has given. And those who are not given gentleness, they are not given the khair. They are deprived from the goodness. We don't want to be, be deprived from the goodness. And also, in another hadith we learned, don't be harsh or rude. This is not good. And also we learn if somebody is harsh and rude and uh, they are saying uh, things which are not appropriate, then also return them same way, what we learned from this hadith, but not more than that and not to curse or say anything more than that. And also we learn uh, in this hadith, uh, gentleness will adorn your character. If you don't have gentleness, it will make your character defective. So we want to adorn it, isn't it? And here, it doesn't mean that with outsiders we are good, but at your home you are not. You shouldn't do that. And lastly, we learn people who are forbidden from hellfire are the people who are accessible. They are easy and gentle. Jazakallah khair and kaseer. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka na tublik. So, and we are doing prayer according to sunnah. And in this uh, book, we are learning and trying to make our salah good. Prayer according to salah, uh, sunnah. This is compiled by Muhammad Zulfiqar. So in this, the chapter, first chapter will do it. So here talks about how the, you know, how we should improve our salah. So let's see the first chapter for this, inshallah. So let's begin. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma abad fawz billahi min ash-shaitan jim. Bismillah ar-Rahman. First chapter, Salah. Obligation, eminence and importance. Salah or prayer is the plural of Salawat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has prescribed is one of the pillar of Islam. Rasu amari islamu wa umuduhu salatu wa zarwatu sanamihi jihadu fi sabilillah the head of the matter religion is islam its pillar is the prayer and its highest peak is jihad for allah's cause so salah constitutes the physical mental and spiritual submission of allah which starts by pronouncing allahu akbar means allah is great and ends with salam assalam alaikum and this is the concrete proof of our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it fulfills out very purpose of the creation. And here, Allah makes it very clear in Quran that very purpose for which he has created to worship him throughout our lives. In Surah Al-Zariyat, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have created not the jinn and men, except that they should worship me alone. I seek not any provision from them, nor do I ask they should feed. And in another Surah, we learn, فَسَبِّ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعَبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَاتِكَ الْيَقِينَ So glorify the praises of your Lord and be of those who prostrate themselves to Him and worship your Lord until there comes unto Him the hour that is certain. So before that hour comes, so submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salah is obligation to be fulfilled throughout one's life and must be established even in times of fear. حافظوا على الصلاة والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله خانتين فإن قبتم فرجالا أو ركبانا فإذا آمنتم فاذكروا الله كما علمكم ما لم تكون تعلمون This is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Guard strictly five obligatory salawat. Salawat means plural of salah. Especially the middle salah. Asr. And stand before Allah with submission and do not speak to others during the salah. And if you fear an enemy, perform salah on foot or riding. And when you are safe, perform salah in the manner he has taught you which you knew not before. So in this hadith, in this uh, ayah, what we learn, no matter what, we have to do five salah. 
here especially mention about the asar salah because that is the time we are more more busy so we have to stand before allah in submission and when you stand before allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not speak to others because we are submitted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even at the time of fear do the salah faskuru allah kama allamakum ma lam takunu ta'lamu whether you know khiftum when you are fear for rijalukum aw rukuban you should perform salah even on the foot or riding so even though we we are not mounting on animal but we mount on the flight we mount on the uh, car many times it happens uh, you know you are driving driving you are not getting any but you are not on the driver seat and you have wudu if you don't have wudu you have the um, uh, like you know mud or tayammum you can still do the salah but even you can stop somewhere in between because when you are in the car or any vehicle but what if you are in the flight in the flight when journey is going on there also you can ask them what is the qibla and what are the timings they will tell you and you can still do your salah because here it's mentioned you shouldn't leave it salah on foot or riding but when you are safe perform salah in the manner he has taught you means when you are in a um, journey safar you will do qasr that you will instead of four you do two except for the fajr and uh, you know maghrib you have to do three on in maghrib you can't shorten that and fajr always rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did sunnah also so even in the qasr also you going to do that but here when you are in fee, some, sometimes you know we are in the airport so we can look for the corner and you can still do the salah you don't have to worry about it and before that we have seen wa ma qalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said i have created man and jinn what is the purpose for this they are created for ibadah and fasabbi bihamdi rabbika so glorify praise your lord so this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the purpose to live and we should do it and here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said order your children to be punctual in salah when they attend the age of 7 and when they attend the age of 10 years hate them for abandoning salah and provide them with separate bed in this hadith what we learn first of all make our children punctual at the age of 7 means we should teach them and make them understand what salah is how they should do it because you know when we train them with us together with a boy or a girl doesn't matter they will learn it but when they are age of 10 hit them it doesn't mean hit on the face or hit it badly means you can tell them nicely and if they are not listening tell them again and again for abandoning salah until unless they follow it many people they come and say oh my uh, children they are not uh, praying but i am not forcing because i want them to do it with themselves because they are children you are elder you are supposed to tar- teach them you are supposed to do it how you do it you know better because you are parent you can't say oh i am leaving them because they are innocent they doesn't know whether to pray or not you are responsible for them and at the age of 20 or 25 or 30 and they they are still not praying what does it mean now they are mature but it was their parents who didn't taught them it was their mistake but what if they are elder now they should learn themselves if their parent were not good what about themselves they should learn it and many times it happens you know parent they never taught the prayer or they never said anything they never reprimand for the worldly things they reprimand but for the prayer they never did it so children they never prayed they are muslim by name but they don't know how to pray they learn it with themselves because they love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is in our fitra that we pray because prayer will bring peace and tranquility in yourself and we love to pray so at the age of 7 you should teach them if they don't learn tell them tell them at the 10 you can hit them also salah provide and separate beds whether boy boy or girl girl doesn't matter after 7 year when they are 10 they should their bed should be separated or at least keep a pillow in between them make it make sure that they don't uh, you know sleep together boy boy girl girl doesn't matter negligence in the matter of salah is kufr infidelity 
Prophet ﷺ said the covenant which is between us and them, the disbeliever is Salah. So whoever abandons it has disbelief. So if you abandon Salah, you will be kafir. In many countries, when you say kafir, they mind it. So when we are being a Muslim, we say to each other, oh, you're not praying, you're a kafir. Actually, this is a hadith. Why you want to abandon? I have seen some people, they're old, elderly people, but still they're not praying. They say, they say, oh, no, we are not well, this or that. All age, they should have fear of Allah. They should have that responsibility. No matter what, we should pray. They watch TV, they do all the chores, they eat, they go out, everything. But for the prayer, they don't do it. We should pray. And our... If we are loving our own parents, if we are loving our own children, tell them to pray. And many sisters, they say, my husband is not praying. Tell them nicely. Don't taunt them. Don't belittle them. Don't mock at them. Never, never ever do that. Be kind, be gentle, be good to them. Be as a role model. You know, if you say again and again, sometimes you don't have to say. You practice well, inshallah, the other person will do it. Bring good in your life. Bring good in the home. Don't be bad to them. You know, many people, they complain. Oh, my, my wife, she prays, but she, she has a big mouth. She talks very badly. She is very harsh, rude. A person who is praying, how can be they be harsh and rude? We shouldn't do that. Role model is who? Prophet And he said, between a man and disbelief and shirk is forsaking salah. So, wa baina kufri wa sharki, shirki, tarkus salah. We don't want to do tarkus salah. We don't want to abandon salah. So, man and disbelief and shirk is forsaking salah. Don't abandon salah anytime, no matter what. There can be exception. Sometimes you may be sick or so, but still, even you are on the bed, Still, you can do it with your eyes. You can do it by sitting, but by, by lying down. If you can't do wudu, you can do tayammum. One day when Prophet ﷺ mentioned salah to his companion, saying, whoever guards it strictly will have light, evidence of his faith, and deliverance on the day of resurrection. And whoever does not guard it strictly will have neither light nor evidence of his faith nor deliverance and he will be gathered on the day of resurrection with Pharaoh, Haman, Farun and Ubay bin Khalaf. So in this hadith what we learn? A light who guards the salah. It's not said you know who is not playing. Whoever guards it strictly will have light. Means you know our salah, how we can guard our salah. You know one salah after another and doing proper vudu, doing according to sunnah on the proper timing and dressing properly. Sometimes our shirts are so small. When we go in the sujood, everybody can see our, you know, like area which are which should be hidden, which is called satar, whether a boy or a girl. Why don't we keep a dress for our salah? So that way you will be completely covered. There are few things, you know, sometimes we are wearing dirty clothes, sweaty clothes, it smells, you know, that's not right. If you are doing uh, chores at uh, the kitchen and after that you are praying, make sure you change it or take the shower. Keep yourself clean because angels will be surrounding you who guards it strictly. So they, what they will have, they will have light. We need light. Why we need light? On the pulsarat, our light will be the light of the iman. If you have good iman, if we pray on time, that will be the light of the iman, light of the faith. That will be the deliverance on the day of resurrection on the akhirah. Whoever does not guard it, what you are not guarding your prayer, means you are doing quickly, one after another, or you are doing on the edge, you know, almost the salah time ends, that time you are praying. No, you shouldn't do that. Once or twice, maybe some exception, you were in the meeting and by the time it ended, it happened. Allah knows your intention. But for the people who are on job, for the people who go and pick up their children, 
they should be in wudu all the time. As soon as they get your chance, they do the salah. Allah knows your intention, right? And if they are not uh, guarding their prayer, they, they don't have light, first of all. And the second thing, they will be gathered with, you know, Pharaoh, Haman, Karun, and Obey bin Qalaf. These were the people who were arrogant. Those who were people who were not good. They are going to hellfire. So some of the scholars said in the explanation of this hadith that whoever neglects Salah will be gathered on the day of uh, resurrection with these disbelievers. For if he neglects them out of pride because he's a king or a leader, then he resembles Pharaoh. And if he neglects that out of pride of holding a powerful position, then he resembles Haman, the minister of Pharaoh. And so he will be gathered with him on the day of resurrection and taken to the hellfire. Whoever neglects them because he's distracted by his wealth or the desire, then he resembles Karun, whom Allah caused earth to swallow up. And he will also be gathered with him and taken to the hellfire. Whoever neglects it because he distracted by his business and other kinds of dealing, then he resembles Obey bin Khalaf, the Meccan disbeliever trader. And he will be gathered and taken with him to the fire on the day of judgment. So may Allah save us all. And another hadith, Abdullah bin Shaqiq narrated, the companions did not consider the abandoning of any action of their as disbelief except abandoning Salah. So companion, they try to avoid abandoning Salah. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu narrated, said, my friend Prophet Sallallahu enjoined upon me, what are the things he said? Do not ascribe anything as a partner with Allah if you are cut into pieces and bond. The first thing, not to do shirk, not to ascribe any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though you are cut into pieces and bond, many people these days, it has become passion to visit the shrines, to visit the asthana or darga. They think that's okay. They say, oh, because we are not righteous, we are asking righteous people to pray for us. There is no such thing. You can directly communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't describe partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going to say, oh, this is my dad, mom and dad, and this is also my mom and dad. No, there is no such thing, right? We have only one mother and one father, isn't it? So Allah is only one God. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. We can't say, okay, Allah is one, but I'm going to ask another deity too. You can't ask. Being a Muslim, how can you do that? And these days, shirk is going on and on, and they give different meanings for it, but Allah knows their intention. That is a shirk. Second thing, do not abandon prescribed salah deliberately. For he who abandons it deliberately, indeed Allah's protection become free from him. You know, deliberately because you are lazy, fatigued, you are not praying. And Allah is free, Allah is ghani, and we are fakir. And we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah is not protecting you, what does it mean? Allah is not saving you and we want protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save in this world also in the hereafter. And the third thing, do not drink alcohol for it is a key to all evil. You know, it's literally alcohol and also we have seen these days there are different kind of cigarette, there, there are different kind of things which you smell and you, you feel like alcoholic thingy. It's not only like people who are in college and, you know, the mature people doing, even the smaller kids, they are supplying in the schools, so, sort of things like called drugs and so on and so forth. They should avoid that and keep eyes open for the children because shaitan is an open enemy. We think our children is very innocent. Of course they are, but shaitan is never. Shaitan is always chasing our children. Because, you know, the shaitan will attack on the person who is feeble. And the children, 
they are very innocent. They don't know what is right and wrong. Even though if they are like, you know, 10, 14, doesn't matter. You should look at them carefully. And if you feel some smell is going on, if you feel something is wrong, make sure the things are okay with them. Because you have to make sure. This is your duty. Don't get so much engrossed in your own life and you're busy with your laptop, your gadgets, and they are busy with their gadgets and you're not getting time except to uh, you meet on the dinner table and then you don't even see their face. No, keep an eye, even go to their room and see, even watch everything. I'm not saying to spy them, but you have to be careful. So what are the three things we learn in this hadith? not to scribe any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though you are cut into pieces and burn. The second thing not to abandon Salah deliberately because Allah is free from you and Allah will not protect you. Third thing do not drink alcohol for it is a key to all evil. Many people they think oh I'm not drinking alcohol but I can uh, you know take cigarette and some people uh, they use that betel leaf and in that they put certain kind of things they are kind of one and the same. They have uh, alcohol has uh, more percentage of uh, you know toxin and it has less but you know it's belong to the same category you should avoid that those are all gray areas so here uh, we stop inshallah next of the uh, next uh, session will continue so we are doing prayer according to sunnah eminence and importance of salah today we did that so just a quick review for today class what we did so here in this uh, salah obligation eminence and importance and the head of the matter religion is islam its pillar is the prayer and it is highest peak is jihad for allah's cause and uh, in surah al-jinn wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liyabudu i have created not the jinn and men except they pray and the next thing we learn, Fasabi Bihamdi Rabbika Vakum Minas Sajidin. So glorify the praise of your Lord. Salah is obligation to be fulfilled throughout one's life and must be established even in the times of fear. Virtual salah, you can stop. And you know, if uh, you know salah is going on in masjid, you should listen to that and you should answer it. Virtual also, you can uh, answer it, but when the class is going on, you can stop the, you know, that time so guard strictly five salah salawat especially the middle one what is that asar and stand before allah with complete submission you shouldn't talk and your concentration should be towards allah and even at the time of fear also you should pray foot or riding and after when you reach it you should do complete salah and also we have seen in this we learn order your, your children to be punctual in salah when they age of seven boy or a girl doesn't matter you should teach them salah till the age of seven and at the age of 10 then reprimand them for abandoning them it's not like heavily hitting them especially not on the face but you should try to make them understand and also those who are not praying even if they are old or young doesn't matter try to tell them in a nice manner don't taunt them don't be hard but try to tell them and make dua continuous procedure it is you know till they start praying it provide them with separate beds boy or a girl girl or a girl doesn't matter you should provide separate beds or at least keep a pillow or the space in between them and negligence in the matter of salah is a kufr so you know faman tarkaha faqad kafar. so don't uh, uh, tark the salah that will be like a kufr we don't want to be called kafir isn't it and here, Baina Rajula wa Baina al Kufr. What is that, uh, you know, between a man and a disbelief and a shirk is forsaking salah. You know, wa shirk ki tarkus salah. Again, tarkus salah is like, you know, doing it deliberately. And Prophet mentioned about three things not to abandon salah and uh, means uh, not to associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also not to drink alcohol. And um, in this hadith, we learn not to abandon prescribed salah deliberately, scribe partner, and not to drink alcohol. And before that, we have learned those who are not praying, 
they they will be they don't have any light and we need light in the hereafter and uh, they will be with they will be gathered with pharaoh haman and karun so here we end our session inshallah we'll continue in the next class subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka